Lawrence from Webpage FX. On behalf of the SEO webinar series that Schweike Media is hosting to talk about local search ranking factors, uh, you might see all those different terms and numbers being, oh my goodness, what does this all mean? And we're going to break that down for you today. Uh, but more importantly, I just want to emphasize what optimizing your local SEO is so important for you. Even if you're a, just a local magazine or a cafe, um, it's crucial that you make local SEO um, a main part of your marketing budget. Uh, that's how people are going to find you, especially when they don't know you exist. Look at these ranking factors. Uh, you see the major ones are place page signals, external local signals, and on page signals. We have a whole bunch of variety of smaller ones from social to personalization. Um, also important is because locals became such a crucial part of Google search. Uh, you have the carousel now with the interactive Google Maps. You have Google Plus, which is just becoming even more and more integrated every month. Uh, or recent integration with hashtags where you can hashtag a word, uh, let's say hashtag Schweiki Media in the Google search, and then anything that relates to that in Google Plus will automatically brought it up in the right hand side of the search panel for you to view. So that's a great integration there that you can do a lot with local as well. And then obviously Google Places, which is just huge for organic ranking. Uh, just to give you some information, background on these ranking factors, uh, this was from Moz.com. They do a search ranking factor survey every year, so this is from their 2013 survey. So let's get started. Uh, the first one, the biggest portion of your local SEO is going to be your place page signals. Property category associations, uh, proximity, uh, which includes the accurate NAP and NAP stands for name, address, and phone number, which should be matching all across your site, uh, making sure that um, it's in all your place page information and it's consistent throughout any place that you have it on web. Uh, category associations, that can be on Google Places, Google Plus, and multiple citations that you'll hopefully be building that I'll talk on later. And also a uh, location keyword in the title tags and headlines, which is pretty crucial. On signals. Once again, NAP, name, address, and phone number information should be featured on your website. It should stand across your schema, your HTML, matching your page NAP, and your H card, making sure all that is the exact same information so it doesn't confuse Google Spider when it goes and uh, your website. It can make sure it can accurately represent your information together. And so bring it up whenever someone that has an IP address that's in that proximity uh, Google something that could relate to your business. Also, location and title and meta description. And the domain authority, which comes with on page SEO, which we'll be linking to the article with this, uh, to a previous article I did about on page SEO, making sure that's strong. Because the more on page SEO you do, the higher domain authority which means the ranking you will get for your local SEO. And if you have an optimized landing page, uh, optimize that for local. And landing pages are very important. So if you don't already have a landing page uh, for your website, I would highly encourage you to get that optimize it for your local needs. Next, local signals. And that consists of 16% of the ranking factors. And these are consistent, high-quality citations from sources that are authoritative, trustworthy, and industry-relevant. Uh, all of them will be industry-relevant, but you want to make sure that the ones that are, you want to be on those, because uh, that makes a, a good portion of how you rank for local SEO and in the search engine. Citations, uh, those are making sure you have your name, address, and phone number on uh, the different directories that are online, like the internet, Yellow Pages, Yelp.com, Superpages.com, Local, City Search, My Yellow Book, even Facebook Local, and dozens more. Uh, this is a great thing that you can get an intern to do just to go through one summer or a few weeks. Uh, make sure that you are on these uh, citations and that all your information is accurate and up to date, which is crucial in how you will rank. Next signal, quality inbound links. 
actually going to talk more about uh, inbound links on our next webinar. Uh, it has a lot to do with SEO in general. And you know, what makes a good high quality inbound link for now? I'll leave you with uh, the domain authority. That's very crucial to make sure that whatever website is linking back to you, that they have a fairly good domain authority and they have a, a good trust. So why newspapers are always a great uh, way to get trust from a website because they are a very trusted source. And also make sure you have great anchor text, especially if you're local. It's great if you can get uh, any anchor text from, let's say, an, an example I'm using later in the webinar. For Mr. Reuter, you want to say, Onita, you know, Mr. Reuter, get the entire phrase anchor text and then draw it back to your site with a link. That will really help you. And we'll go over that in the next webinar. We have a very important one. It's reviews. Uh, they think, well, you know, I have some reviews that are mixed, but how many people do you think really read this? A lot of people. Reviews are very, very important, especially views on uh, those that Google places and relevant third party sites. Uh, with a text review, they have, have a good point of uh, uh, text with them. And there are a diversity uh, has lots of different information, not just about what product or service, but that you link to or even have the keywords in for your product and services. Um, also the quantity of reviews is very important. Uh, and the location, making sure all the locations with them are accurate with where they had taken place if you have multiple locations. Obviously, making sure that they are positive, but at the same time, realistic. You don't want it to look that you're putting reviews out there and that they're all ones that you just wrote up yourself from the company. You want people to believe these reviews, and they should be real. Uh, ask your customers, the ones that are loyal fans, to write, and they definitely will. Uh, customers don't want you to fail as a company, and they'll help you out with that in the review section. So, wanting that on third party sites. Uh, and also on the Google Places uh, reviews, I'm sure there are uh, native reviews. Reviews, why is reviews so important besides people looking at them? Well, because of the carousel that Google recently put uh, these past few months. If you go into Google, you don't even have to type the city you're in. You type in cafes, and one comes up, but the carousel at the top, which is a um, horizontal uh, goes around that you can see all these different companies that are on uh, the Google Places. And actually, they draw information from Google Plus as well. That's why you see these reviews and scores. So people can now just scan through this, pick a company, and be like, hmm, what's this uh, related to my location here? They look down to their right of where that map is, and then they can see how close they are to location as well as reviews, numbers, hours. So you want to ensure that your uh, Google Plus has all that information filled out for them, so it is on the carousel. And also, there's, uh, more than probably 90% of people will go there uh, are looking at cafes and different uh, all the things that do come up on the carousel, and we'll see that review score right off the bat. So that's important for uh, you to make sure you make that good impression on, on them. Going back to the carousel, uh, which does have some personalization, I'll show you in a second. Personalization only makes up for 8%, but it is a grown factor. Uh, like when one of your friends on Google Plus plans a company, let's say in Schweiki Media, which you all should do, and if you did a search in Google, a company would come up earlier in the search, which is the search in the results pages, because your friend liked it. You don't even have to like Schweiki Media for you to see in the search engine results page because your friend did. And this goes back to the example I showed. Uh, this was connected to my Google Plus, and you might be surprised to see that Tomato Pie Cafe Facebook is that first result that you might think, why Tomato Pie Cafe in Harrisburg? Well, that's called personalization. Uh, it's because I actually liked Tomato Pie Cafe years ago, and so it's right there first on my search results, Google reminded me that I liked it. Uh, so that's a little bit of what personalization is. 
And it has more to that because it's, it's a giant field, and each day SEO is coming more and more ways that Google is personalizing the search to um, individual needs and make it a more social, social search experience. An example would be Now Cars, which was literally just released. Um, it's one of the most recent updates, and it's trick-based location. And the is pulled from companies, uh, the company's Google Plus local accounts, and these Now Cards show events based on your search and previous likes on Google Plus. And Now Cards is um, uploading events to their Dell calendar. Affect what they will see in the search and results page. Uh, for example, if you're, an email, or if you're running an email marketing campaign, you make sure that if you have an event coming up, a webinar, anything like that, that you have an option to include them to the reader's Gmail calendar. Because it's uploaded into the Gmail's calendar, it'll create an out card so that all of their friends that's connected with that Gmail, with that Google Plus, will see and they'll be like, oh, this person attended the Schweiki Media event, so I'm going to go too because you know I'm interested in the same thing because we're friends. So you see how that could be a, a huge benefit for marketers as well as for local SEO if you're having like a local event, um, even for charities that are local. That could be a, a great way to uh, use that personalized search. Knowledge, which is only six percent right now, but it's it's really growing. Uh, that one probably most of all you can tell. Uh, drink experience in SEO, um, you have, which is important for mostly for bloggers or for people who have that are connected with your company website. Uh, connect rel author, which is your Google Plus, uh, to your website. So it shows a, a face that is um, connected with the Google Plus profile, run search results by that. A website that it's connected to. And Google tends to favor uh, whoever has connected that rel author. Profile is a must. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you should do a Google Plus profile, uh, but for now, we'll just say it should be completed and active uh, for you to get the most benefit out of your local SEO uh, because that does translate over to the local uh, search results. Also, media associated with your business. Uh, this could look like a Flickr, YouTube, all those types of media should be tagged to your business because in the search results they will come up and therefore uh, people can go from that media to your business, which is a great conduit for you. Um, so the authority of plus ones on a website, the number plus that you get, Twitter followers, Facebook, um, social media influencing factors there, and also uh, make sure that your Google Plus is individually owner verified. Uh, and that's important to verify your local Plus page on there. It continues to be updated and accurate with the same name, address, and phone number. That's on your HTML, that's on your H card, that's uh, should be on your website somewhere, obviously, for the first to know so they can or in the search results as well. And behavioral signals. The click through rate from the search results to a website. This is uh, mobile clicks to call. Let's see someone's on the run. Uh, and mobile is definitely a rising field, so you should be paying attention to it, especially since a lot of people who are using mobile are local. They're trying to find phone numbers and trying to find locations on their phone uh, to find places to eat. So it's a great way to use mobile to make sure that um, you're getting a local search. So whenever someone you know types up a cafe in the area, their phone number will automatically come up on the search and results page. So people will click right there to call you. So that towards behavioral signals that will influence your local SEO rankings more and more. And obviously check-ins and offers that people click um, while they're going through the website. And the more activity the census is going through your site, the more they will raise that ranking factor. See a little um, 
oh, what about this question? Uh, people come up to me and ask, so what about companies with multiple locations? I mean, it's one company. It's just Mr. Like our example is here. So, you know, I have one in Greater Syracuse. I have one in Oneida. There's different uh, ones all over the place. So how do I make sure Google doesn't confuse, you know, map my name, address, and phone number with another address and phone number and be like, oh, this is inconsistent, so I'm not going to rank them high. So how do you prevent that? What we do at WebPage FX is we actually split it. Uh, most effective way to do SEO for that. Two examples of two of their websites that we split into. We have one for Onita and one for Greater Syracuse. And so completely split, they have two different Google Pluses, um, and we do their SEO differently too. We make them have two separate campaigns so that they can get the most for each location. And so for Onita, that and Mr. Reuter will come up first and have the accurate contact information and everything. And then the same for Greater Syracuse. So, and I know. <laughs> and, uh, you might be thinking, I am so confused between Google Places and Google Plus. And what's the difference between all this? Uh, well, before I get into an action plan to help you get your local SEO off the ground, can I explain um, what so we are beginning to integrate Google Places and Google Plus um, appears on Google Maps and Search. However, Google Plus is the one that provides the information for Google Google's carousel. Uh, and you can manage Google Plus and your AdWords account if you use that within your Google Places dashboard. So first off, the first thing you should do is verify your Google Places for business. That's the absolute first thing you got to take that step on. Um, they will make you verify usually through phone email so that they have the right business. Uh, people, if they do call you, are going to be able to get a hold of someone at that business. Next. Uh, to complete your Google Plus business profile and be active. I cannot stress enough the importance of being active on your Google Plus. So it really is going to be um, the same amongst competitors. Uh, it's just seeing your business as you are on that Google Plus and giving quality content. Quality content is another thing that's just huge. See right now, whether you're local or even for a broader spectrum, and having content, you know, making it for this uh, local SEO, making it local and um, applicable to the local users uh, will be very beneficial, especially if you post it on a social media like Google Plus. Also, optimize your on-page SEO for local. Once again, you can check out my article that I recently wrote on on-page SEO. Uh, the stars are coming to so make sure you have your page uh, and website up and run everything you need for that. And also claim your citations after that. Um, this is free advertising. I know directories that are just waiting for you to put your name and address and phone number on there for people to find you. Uh, and it would be a shame for you not to claim that advertising. So use the number to use the same name, address, and phone number on all the citations. And if you do change that name, address, or phone number, make sure to go back through all the citations. Yes, it would be a pain, but make sure you go through and change that because it means a lot in the local search engine results. Again, to get an intern to do it or an employee to do it an hour a week to go through and just get all those uh, citations. And most of them are free. You might have to pay for, but the majority of them are going to be free for you. So lastly, get quality reviews. Uh, reviews include uh, quality content. Uh, once again, they have to have diversity, making sure they not just talk about one exact service, but maybe they talk about customer service, a product, uh, why they like you, making sure making sure you have that variety. And the fact that they, they need to be, you know, if there is something that they don't like, like waiting in line, making sure that, you know, that place that, that's okay if you have that negative review. But again, for all of that positive review that are realistic um, is fully optimized, you can ask someone, a friend of the company, uh, to write that up for you. 
know, not on your Google Plus uh, profile page. It really help a lot in, in making sure you get conversions. So, our today. Uh, have any questions, or if you would like to ask a question or have me cover something in this webinar, you can email me at alicia at webpagefx.com. Thanks for listening.